Hello, everybody. Today, I found an article on my favorite newspaper, uh, Zeit. And uh, the author is from the Council, the German Council on Foreign Relations. And uh, as you may guess, uh, this is related and um, it has ties with the uh, Council on Foreign Relations uh, in America. It is also uh, affiliated and modeled after the Chatham House in uh, Great Britain. And um, the author, Ms. Uh, Sophia Koller, is, the re is a research fellow uh, specialized in uh, counterterrorism, blah, blah. Um, what you must know about the Council on Foreign Relations, a German version of it, Deutsche Gesellschaft für Auswärtige Politik, um, it has a lot of prominent members, um, a, a number of um, German or former German federal ministers, uh, which I will not go into details. Um, you may, may or may not uh, recognize the names. So this is a, a, a meet and greet space uh, between uh, very, very powerful people. Uh, the funding comes, um, uh, among other places, from our federal foreign ministry, uh, as well as from the, the bank Deutsche Bank, uh, Airbus, which is a, um, a um, arms manufacturer, one of the biggest arms manufacturers in the Western world, I would say. And the article itself um, is about um, bringing back ISIS fighters uh, to Germany. Um, as you may know, um, when ISIS was a thing, um, that was uh, 2014 to uh, 2016, um, a lot of Europeans actually moved um, or, or went fighting uh, for the Islamists, and uh, among them there were also uh, quite a few Germans. The whole thing, the entire caliphate was eventually eliminated by uh, Donald Trump within a few months after uh, Barack Obama uh, left the White House. The U.S. military and allies uh, removed the caliphate. Um, it was uh, not a difficult task to do. The assessment of Barack Obama that it is just a varsity team uh, military-wise was actually correct, but he totally ignored the, the uh, ramifications of just letting it sit there because a lot of people took inspirations uh, from, from this group. And now the debate is about uh, getting back uh, those poor little children <laughs> that have fought uh, in the caliphate. And I'm making uh, this comment, little children, because this is actually one of uh, the arguments that Sophia uh, Koller uh, presents in this article. Supposedly, if all these 1,070 Germans that uh, went to join ISIS, um, only 70 adults were left in camps in North Syria, and an additional 150 children, as she calls them, not, not even uh, youngsters or something, no, no, children, um, uh, would uh, still remain in the Kurdish territories. Now, this is very unlikely, and I suspect that uh, they are as, as much minus as a lot of the refugees were in 2015. At that time, we were told that um, basically everybody who, who crosses the border is only a child. And what was strange, in my opinion, is that you saw a lot of TV reports and uh, talk show appearances of people that looked surprisingly old, and they were presented to us as the ideal uh, the ideal refugee because many of them seemed to float through the uh, entire education system and uh, seemed to be very smart. Suddenly, you know, somebody taking a medical degree in, in strides or something like this. And my suspicion is that many of them actually were no minors and instead they were uh, just full-fledged adults, uh, some of them maybe already practicing um, medicine or whatever uh, they suddenly succeeded in so quickly. Um, so um, that that is why I think um, these um, all these children, as she refers to them, are probably not children. But I have no way of knowing so far. I've just printed off this uh, this article, and I want to go with you through that. Um, what is absurd is that she starts this article by talking about a murder case, and in the teaser already, she says that. If we don't take back ISIS fighters, for whatever reason, this leads to further radicalization. So she starts her article by um, introducing Abdullah H., um, who had uh, slaughtered two homosexuals in October 2020. Um, his, uh, uh, or he, has, uh, he has killed one and uh, stabbed uh, and wounded uh, a second man uh, in Dresden. And this man is now uh, tried in court. 
this is how she starts. And then she asks the question, how did it come so far? Um, everybody was, was sworn. And then she goes a, a long way explaining that basically everybody um, was already after him. So the... Uh, the perpetrator was uh, was uh, de detained uh, for supporting ISIS uh, right up until uh, five days uh, before his murder and uh, and crave bodily harm at, uh, attack. Um, he was uh, in a program uh, for deradicalization, and the uh, the Secret Service was also looking into his activities. So actually, the, everything was in place to stop him from. Uh, killing and maiming some other citizens, right? Or not some other, but <laughs> some citizens, some German citizens. Um, and uh, strange enough, uh, she actually does not answer this, but she will later say that, well, it's the job of all these of, of all these institutions to actually stop something like it. But up until here, we are presented with uh, bringing back Islamists might remedy um, something like uh, radical Islamic attacks, which is crazy. Uh, Miss Collis' uh, rudeness comes through first uh, in, in the fourth uh, paragraph. Uh, here she says, so how did it come so far? Um, because Islamists in Germany um, ha uh, mean some risk. Um, even in a, in a case like uh, Abdullah H., uh, who underwent a de-radicalization program in prison, and there was a lot of effort to, uh, to um, survey him, um, it didn't help. Um, and then she just, um, you know, non sequitur, she just goes on with um, complete security can never exist. Only one thing is sure, germs have to get used to it. Germs have to get used to it. That is her conclusion. So she laid out that all the usual left-wing politics, uh, talking points, they obviously don't work. It's not enough to just simply survey people. It's not enough to... Uh, uh, to go through these de-radicalization uh, de programs, which I think are the Maoist um, re-education approach. I'm against this anyways. Uh, but anyway, so her education, re-education approach does not work. Surveillance doesn't work, um, et cetera, et cetera. The, the prison system is actually far too comfortable to certain people. All of this obviously has not worked. And instead of asking, okay, what would work? She just says, germs have to get used to it. It's not my problem. I, I live probably in a very secure area. Uh, I can afford uh, houses with thick walls. Other people will have to pay the price. So it's okay. And then in the next paragraph, in the next sentence, she actually blames this on these uh, 230 Germans who are still in uh, in camps in North Syria, and not not that they are uh, the direct cause of uh, so, some something like a terrorist attack, but rather that keeping them in those camps is somehow the cause for this and the reason why Germans have to get used to this. Uh, she writes. Um, that's because uh, still 230 Germans, uh, which have joined ISIS in Syria and Iraq, um, after are still uh, in Kurdish uh, in in the camps of the Kurdish Autonomous Region in North Syria, um, kept after the military uh, defeat, with the exception of a few uh, individuals, Germany uh, denies to take them back. Um, and by that, they are doing injustice. She will give you the reason why she thinks this is unjust. And actually, I must agree with her to some degree that, yes, um, what what we ask uh, the, the Kurds or the, the Syrians to do is to keep our nationals while we ask them to also take their nationals. And the reason for that is that um, so far, their side of the usual international law is not is not kept. Um, we have not yet sent back all these uh, Syrians who have no right to be here to Syria. They are not cooperative so far, and therefore um, there is actually no reason why we should blindly take the most dangerous people out of Syria. The second thing is that uh, maybe 
that's not even what the Syrians want. So even if this stupid international law has agreed that it is always the right thing to do to send people back to their countries of origin after they have uh, delivered, uh, after they have committed a crime, uh, that may be just a bad idea for all for all sides. No, no side is happy with it, and then therefore there can be a, a, a superseding treaty or an agreement, maybe even a silent ac agreement, like in this case, that maybe it is better for the Kurds to take some revenge on on the offenders who have slaughtered their families, who have um, engaged in uh, building up a structure that has uh, destroyed their communities and their lives. Uh, maybe they should take some revenge on on uh, these Germans uh, who have been captured uh, in the in the process, and um, um, maybe um, it is better for them to have some trials, formal or informal, you know, as much as they can in the given situ uh, situation. Uh, Syria is still broken down. Um, they have an easier time to find evidence, witnesses, and and so on than we have. She says later in that text that yes, Germans also ha have had success in convicting uh, cr criminals from ISIS. Yes, but that is far in between, and it is very expensive. It is very difficult, and there is actually there's no uh, benefit for the Kurdish and the Syrian side to um, go through that uh, uh, lengthy process, nor is there a, ben a benefit for us doing it. Now, if that were the case, that a lot of these people are innocent, that they are in fact children, as she says, um, then maybe uh, the Kurds have already found or, or are more likely to find a, a good solution than we can. And now she makes the argument that uh, these children, uh, these free-floating children, they can't just be um, adopted by random people or something. I mean, what are we supposed to do with a camp of unaccompanied children? Are they unaccompanied children? If not, who are the parents? Um, if those parents are ISIS fighters uh, already executed or in prison or something, uh, do they have other relatives? And so, on? What is actually the reason why these uh, children are still in this camp? Um, I don't think that she is going to sort this out. Um, and that's probably a reason why uh, so far nobody has found the parents or, or not yet linked up. I don't think that the Kurds, quite frankly, I don't think that the Kurds do just keep um, children, innocent children in camps for the sake of it. That's what she suggests. She suggests that um, those evil Kurds are just keeping uh, ISIS children um, in camps for the sake of it. And it's, uh, if it were for... Uh, for the Germans to just take those children um, that uh, would um, solve the problem. In reality, of course, she does not know why those children, if they are children, are uh, still kept in camps. And it's most likely that they are not in camps because the Kurds are just evil people. In her article, she quotes a uh, statement by Angela Merkel's office um, that was produced in response to a query from the Green Party in which uh, uh, the Chancellor's office says, or the, the administration says, that um, it is uh, not easy for, uh, f uh, it's not uh, easy to identify and localize the uh, German citizens, uh, or that it were difficult, yeah, it's not easy, it were difficult to identify and localize the German citizens. So there is a problem identifying who is who. And it's also a question um, with regards to the citizenship. Are these people only Germans or can somebody else take care of them? Uh, maybe uh, there is. there are countries who uh, speak the language who are more likely to uh, produce um, just trials. Um, for them, if, uh, for example, the witnesses are Arabic and or, or, or Kurdish uh, speaking, maybe um, if they are Kurdish speaking, a trial in in Turkey can be uh, much easier uh, set up. If they are Arabic, um, then a, a trial in I don't know a Jordan or some other place can be set up. As she continues um, repeating her claim, not explaining, just repeating her claim that uh, bringing back ISIS fighters. Um, could reduce terror. Okay, reduce terrorism by bringing back ISIS fighters. Um, she says, um, despite um, the ability or the possibility that uh, bringing back ISIS uh, fighters um, could um, stop the rebuilding of terror groups in the long run, the f uh, the foreign ministry under uh, Heiko Maas, that's our foreign minister, um, 
um, points to uh, logistic difficulties and a possible danger for the public security. And this, uh, they use this uh, to, uh, to reduce their accountability. That's um, the phrase. Um, uh, they draw themselves out of the affair uh, that she uses means um, they reduce their accountability. They uh, don't want to be liable to, to that. So she accuses the foreign ministry of uh, reducing their accountability, not, not uh, taking the responsibility. Instead, the foreign ministry would point to logistic um, excuses excuses um, uh, to uh, uh, not do this. But she's also hard on other European nations. For example, f uh, France has even more adults and children in those uh, Kurdish camps. Um, uh, the, uh, the UK also does not wish to uh, bring back uh, those uh, citizens. And uh, they have stated that it, it would be better to try them in Syria itself, which makes sense. And additionally, uh, all these nations, they point to the corona pandemic. So you don't want some dingy Islamic uh, fighters uh, in your country, maybe they are coughing. The only paragraph that uh, seems to resemble something like an explanation why in the world um, bringing back Islamists uh, is um, the the key in fighting terrorism um, is then the following. The conditions in the camps are a petri dish uh, for uh, a jihadi uh, socialization of children. Uh, they are seen as a recruit recruiting pool for IS uh, terrorists. Uh, so the analysis of the foundation for science and politics, whoever the heck, they are. Um, and uh, by doing nothing, the federal government, that is our federal government, um, plays into the hands of the ISIS uh, propaganda. So the idea is that um, those children in those camps, um, they may uh, be perfectly innocent, but because they were kept in those camps and nobody uh, would help them, they are more prone to believe that um, the infidel is evil and they cannot trust the infidel and so on. And, the, and so ISIS has an easier time to recruit them. Um, however, of course, um, the, these camps are not run by ISIS. Um, the, these camps are run by people who are a counterbalance to this. Um, they, they are more likely to uh, not... Uh, teach uh, these children uh, the dogma and the idea that uh, the uh, the inmates just associate the the, um, the gods and uh, the Western world who does not help and so on with the devil uh, and would then uh, fall into the trap of ISIS. That's an old left-wing propaganda. I mean, it's also part of the ISIS propaganda, but um, it, it is first and foremost a left-wing um, myth um, Majid Nawaz, unfortunately, is, is very big into this. Now, it's not actually real oppression. It's not a real drama that uh, makes people believe um, all this ISIS uh, stuff. No, it's the perpetual portrayal um, in, uh, in the media and so on that uh, presents Muslims as, as victims of oppression. And if those camps are as bad as she claims, and they, these uh, children... Those, if they were innocent children, so if these children were let out of these camps and they would see how everything else is better, is happier, and people are not evil and so on, they are most likely to see what evil looks like and how whatever CNN is telling them is actually not is actually not true. So they, they would see that the Western world is actually not about oppressing them. Uh, the camp in itself may have been a drama, but um, after that, they will probably love everything they see. They will probably love everything uh, they come in touch with. And they will not run after the next ISIS group. Later in the text, she says, of course, there are cons uh, security concerns with regards to the adults. Um, only in few cases, there will be enough evidence uh, for a uh, arrest order. Uh, the majority of cases will um, will run free um, at first. I will go free at first. Um, as of February 2021, there are 600 Islamic um, 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 risk uh, persons. How do you call those? Um, um, people who are identified by the Secret Service as potential terrorists. I, I don't know what the English word is. Um, in German, it's uh, Islamische Gefährder, so it's the, the, a risky person. 
They are people the security apparatus believes could commit an attack any day. And she continues with uh, also some of those returners, the, those she wants re to, to bring back now, um, could uh, fall into that category. And police and uh, the Secret Service for um would have high costs and a lot of um, um, effort uh, put into into handling the situation uh, for a permanent surveillance um, in, about up to 30 up to 30 officials are needed per individual 30 uh, 30 officials uh, police officers for example are needed or secret service agents are needed to look after one of these high risk individuals uh, the uh, gefährder Additionally, um, programs that uh, help people out of extremist groups cost money um, and they can't guarantee a success. Um, that is what the case of uh, Abdullah Aish, that was the case at the beginning of this article, in Dresden showed. But should we leave that risk uh, with the Kurds who have already suffered enough uh, from, the ISIS, uh, from ISIS? Uh, is her question and my answer would be uh, Yes, because, okay, here's the thing. Our penalties are too mild. Okay, for real crime, our penalties are too mild. Our security service is far too strong. It's far too aggressive towards mostly law-abiding citizens, but it's very lax on the most savage idiots uh, on the planet. And therefore, I would rather see people who are happy to use um, the death penalty, quite frankly, or uh, who are happy to uh, lock people up in prisons that are not very hospitable um, to take care than us. Because we have this stupid idea that everybody must be re-educated. We have this Marxist idea um, with regards to our penalty system. And I would really rather hand over people like those ISIS terrorists to um, a culture that still understands that some individuals can't be helped with some softball um, uh, redirection, you know, some softball inspiration. Maria Keller mentions two demands. Uh, one of them had already been echoed by the Queens, as she mentioned, uh, by the end of March this year. Uh, so the first is that um, we have to take back all of these uh, citizens, uh, all of these uh, citizens in these camps, uh, starting with the miners, uh, as she says, that had been already. Um, also been demanded by the Green Party. And the second demand is that um, there must be a just uh, court um, procedure. And uh, knowing um, all these uh, all these um, groups, all these interest groups, the Muslim interest groups, they are on a perpetual uh, litigation jihad against everything and everybody all the time. Uh, I think everybody, I have the impression almost that every Muslim is studying law right now. Um, because they, they seem to have always the best lawyers uh, and the, the longest running process marches. Um, it, it is obscene. It is obscene how the worst terrorists uh, receive the best, uh, the best lawyers. Um, and uh, so this is what she wants. She wants a, a very expensive uh, legal trial uh, for everybody. The, last, the scum of the earth is supposed to have the highest quality trials on the planet. And uh, with all these uh, these um, professional um, activist litigation lawyers, uh, you know what I mean. Um, that's what she demands. Uh, and then she has a third a third goal, and that is rehabilitation and reintegration. I'm not kidding. So the people that were kept in camps by the Kurds, and I wager that no, the Kurds don't do that for fun. They are not anti-children. They don't hate people just for. Um, I don't know. They they are not doing this for fun. They are probably sorting out um, who to send back to other places and who to um, integrate into their villages, into their communities. They have sorted this out. I'm pretty sure uh, that they are not uh, imprisoning people just for the for the heck of it. Um, but this is what she insinuates, and she says now that of those that are still left in those camps. We must now work towards rehabilitation and reintegration. Germany, she claims, could resort to a diverse and local anchored prevention landscape. In the long run, those uh, returners could be helped 
uh, to find a new perspective in society. I find it interesting that she says we have a diverse, because diverse is usually code for more Muslims. So we have Muslims that are happy to integrate jihadis. Maybe those Muslims should have a conversation whether they should actually absorb certain individuals or whether they should rather behave like the Kurds who have set them out into a camp. Uh, the Kurds, by the way, are also Muslims. I'm just saying that, you know, her view of the Muslim community here in the Western world is probably quite accurate. And I would, I would wager that maybe they changed their, their behavior and would rather resemble the, the behavior of the Muslims, the Kurdish Muslims, that are currently keeping these ISIS fighters or previous ISIS fighters in camps. This is an extreme case where you really had a militia, a very, a very, very evil a militia and uh, that one had been brought under control and they are now in, in, in certain prison camps for people uh, who have uh, probably uh, committed terrible crimes and as her own number suggests, um, the, the Germans who originally went to Syria, they have um, been 1,070 and now they are down to, um, what was the number, uh, 220 or something. Um, so the number has been down. So why has it been down? Because those that the Kurds believed are innocent have been released. Okay, so we are talking about the people that the Kurds could not, in their in their good conscience, um, release. Okay, but she says we, not not only we, but our police and our security services, the intelligence service, etc. We are supposed to sort out who is how dangerous. She says actually very bluntly, of course, um, it, is, uh, it is unclear, or the question is still open, that's the phrase she uses. Uh, it is still um, open uh, what returners can, um, uh, are still ideologues and which one have, um, have broken uh, free from ISIS and who will make it uh, who will make it out of ISIS or the ideology once they are in Germany. But, and this is interesting, but this is the the job of the security um, organizations, the security uh, officials. And the last paragraph uh, says, uh, the federal government would underestimate the positive single uh, that it had if, uh, if we bring back all citizens uh, from North Syria. Uh, they would show... Uh, those, those are the reasons. They would show that um, we were credible in our commitment to international law, that um, we would um, uh, show responsibility uh, for our citizens uh, in the, in the uh, security political uh, domain. And three, um, Islamic extremism and terrorism would be fought. Now, she does not explain in this entire text how bringing back uh, ISIS fighters uh, is conducive to fighting terrorism. The only thing, the only little bone she throws is that um, the, um, uh, the positive treatment of per perhaps innocent children uh, would uh, dry up some additional um, pool, recruitment pool for ISIS. And we are talking, um, what was it, 100, uh, what, 100 children or something. So we are talking about 100 children that otherwise may become terrorists. And, you know, those uh, those people she thinks are going to be terrorists <laughs> are also those people that we have to believe are perfectly innocent and the Kurds are just keeping them in camps because the Kurds are evil. Silly. Uh, I just I think this article is interesting, not because it appeared in Zeit, which remains my favorite newspaper, but, well, as I said, they belong to the German Council on Foreign Affairs, and that institution is a meet and greet of very powerful people. A lot of uh, former ministers are, uh, are members, and uh, they are related to the American Council on Foreign Affairs as well as the British uh, uh, Chatham House. That was it for today. Thank you for listening and I'll see you soon. Bye.